so last week i released a video unboxing and setting up my new nas from qnap now this is a very cool network attached storage guys had four drive bays does accommodate both ssds and mechanical drives either 3.5 or 2.5 inches so i did a full setup on that unboxing so definitely check that video out but today's video i wanted to show you how to set up that network attached storage that way you can access it outside of your home let's go ahead and jump into it <laughs> So if you're new to the channel, I do everything tech from your streaming reviews, streaming news, product reviews, unboxings, and everything in between. Hit that subscribe button in the top right, smash the notification bell, make sure you select all on notification. That way you won't miss a video or a giveaway. So here we are on the main web app. And like I said, I went through the full setup in the initial video. So if you don't know how to get here, I'll go ahead and link that video in the description as well as the comment section. So the NAS is fully set up, up and running. I have my volume set up, but what we wanna do is set this up to where you can access it when you're outside the home via a web page or from your mobile devices. So first thing you need to do guys, you need to go to your app center. You're gonna to go to all apps, you're gonna search, and we're gonna search for the My QNAP Cloud. So you can just type in cloud and it should pop up. So here it is right here, go ahead and install. So it is installed and it automatically added it to my desktop. So let's go ahead and launch it. You need to sign in a valid QNAP ID to turn on the service. Please sign in and try again. So for us, we don't have anything set up as of yet. So what we're gonna do is just create an account and get this up and running. So we're gonna click on get started. All right, it's gonna say you need to create a QNAP ID, register your NAS and enable my QNAP remote access service. We're gonna hit start. And for us, we currently don't have a QNAP ID, so we're gonna go ahead and set one up. All right, so we're just gonna fill in the details. Like I said, this is pretty straightforward information. You can sign in via your Google account, Facebook, or you can go ahead and just create one. So now we're gonna head back to the NAS. We're gonna put in our email address and we're gonna put in our password. And now we're just gonna enter the name of the device. So for me, my device's name is Triple M QNAP, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that in. So it does give you some information that after finishing the wizard, you can access your QNAP NAS remotely with the following address. So you can just use this link right here, sign in and should be good to go. I'm gonna hit next. The wizard will enable the following services to your device. So auto router configuration, DDNS, published services. So I'm just gonna check off, but up to you what you wanna add for this setup. I'm gonna hit next again. So for here, the setup is all done. So you can go ahead and click right here to sign in. So once you get to the web page, just go ahead and hit sign in at the top. Our information is right there, guys. And now we can log into our device again. So, so for now, the username on here is admin, and I'll go ahead and put in my password. All right, so here we are, all the folders are visible. One thing I wanna do now is I wanna go ahead and jump off the network and just test it, just to make sure we still work. Then we'll head over to the app on my phone. So what I did guys, I connected to my hotspot from my phone. It's now connected to my note. I don't have any wired networks connected as of this moment. And just to give you guys an idea of what I'm getting as far as speeds on my mobile device, you can see I'm getting about 13 megabits per second download and probably a lot less than that on the upload side. So yes, I'm connected to my hotspot. And you can see if I went to myqnapcloud.com, I still have access. I am still connected to a hotspot. So real quick, let's just go over the UI, then we'll jump over to the mobile device. So first you're gonna have my devices. So right here I have one network attached storage. I do have the main folders that I've set up or that was installed during the initial setup. I have the option to share links. So if you guys have content, you can share links with other folks. Access control, these are for users. You have your services here. All right, so QTS desktop. So let's go ahead and check that out. All right. I am connected via the cloud. So the basic interface that you normally have when you're at home, you still have access to that when you're on the go. So here's a quick link. Yours is gonna be different obviously, but put in your username and password. And you can see it still gets you to the same page. A little bit slower because of the hotspot, but it still gets you where you need to be. All right, so with that, you have your file station as well. And Essentially, it'll just take you back to that, that same area where you can log in and view your, your files. And you do have a web server. So next you have your 
detailed information, I'll go ahead and blur that out. But you do have the option on register this device if you've sold it or if you've given it to a friend or something like that. You want to get it off your account. So you have your friend's device so it can view devices that are shared with you. You have your links that are shared so you can kind of manage those SSL certificate as well as notifications. Mainly you're going to live in here. I do have a test folder and under that I have my media where I have a couple of videos. So you can see I have a couple options here. I can upload. I can download. it. I can create folders. I can basically manage this how I want to. Very important is the share option. Like I said, with this being such a powerful tool, you do have the option to, to share a smart link where you can share it with someone. You can share how and when this link is valid. You do also have the option to send it directly to one of these social media platforms. So like I said, it's a very cool interface when you're on the go. And to add to that, guys, you still have main access via the web to the UI that you're used to. So before we jump over to the mobile app, I uh, just want to let you know that you do have other options to connect to my QNAP cloud, whether it's on your desktop or on your PC. Of course, we were able to access this via the web on the browser a couple of minutes ago. You also have mobile apps. And if you click on that, it will bring you to a page that basically tells you which app you're getting. So for the mobile app, we're using Q file, which I have downloaded and I'll walk you through it here in a little bit. Also, you do have the option to download this on your PC. And just like the mobile app, it tells you what you need and it gives you the option to download it. So let's go ahead, jump over to my Samsung phone and we're going to get connected to the mobile application. So here's the app. Let's go ahead and launch it. All right. We cannot find the designated download path for your folder. You want to use the default settings. Click yes. Go to our settings and let's go ahead and sign in. All right. So again, we're just going to put in our email address and our password that we used earlier on the web page. All right. So have been signed in. You do have some options here, your cache, your passcode lock, your auto log on. You can go ahead and turn it on and off. For now, I'm just going to leave everything as default and let's go ahead and go back. So here's the NAS again, triple M QNAP. Let's go ahead and click on it. And again, this is going to pop up and this is in the event that you have multiple users on this network attached storage. As for now, I only use the admin, but I will be adding more accounts in the future. Let's go ahead and log in. So here we are, the same folders that we saw on the web page. Here's the test folder here with my media. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll just try this review video. You do have um, options. This will be transcoding on the fly, so you will see a spike in your CPU. Let me go ahead and we'll just launch my dashboard just to see what kind of stress it puts on. Let's um, let's try just transcoding the original 1080p video. And let's just try the Q file player. All right, so playing with no issues, the RAM didn't really move that much. You can see some spike in the network uh, activity. Uh, CPU just jumped a little bit, but uh, no issues with playing this video. You can see I can skip ahead and um, no problems there at all. Uh, let's go back. We're going to try a 4K video. Let's try this one right here. We'll just play the original file. And once again, we'll use the Q file player. All right, so again, did see a little spike in our CPU. The quality is pretty good. Right now, I am using only four gigs of RAM. I will be adding another four gig stick here in the future, but um, no issues there. Transcoding 4K video. So again, guys, one of the main features of this, of course, is just uploading data, or uploading files to this. So if you click on the three lines up top, you do have the option to upload. And you can go to your photo gallery, you can take a video, you can go to your local storage. So you do have a lot of options there just to make sure all your files are in the same place. That's it. Just a quick run through of how you can access your NAS over the Internet. Uh, stay tuned, guys. I will be adding more videos to this playlist. I, I've already done the initial unboxing and review and setup. So definitely check that out. Do have a plan Plex setup coming here soon. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Thank <laughs> you.